Red the Sherwood Inn in green with Bill. And uh, Bill, tell us uh, what you do. I am a professional ghost hunter, paranormal investigator, and I go around, in fact I've been around the whole Northeast doing ghost investigations, trying to find out why the ghosts are there and how we can possibly get rid of them or just put them at ease. 1978 was my first ghost experience. I was a fireman down in Virginia, or down in uh, Warrington, Virginia. So we would go to this abandoned Civil War property and drink on Friday nights. And uh, they, they told me this, this house was haunted. And I didn't believe them. They says, okay, go in the barn first, and you climb up the ladder and you're going to see a face. And so I was even really drinking that. <laughs> and I go up there, start climbing the ladder, and there's a space there and down. Really? Yeah. And I, I mean, cold sugars. So tell us about the Sherwood Inn here in Green, and uh, we've heard a lot of different stories about the history of the inn. We're really curious um, if you can give us a little, a little history about how the inn became and about some of these stories we've heard. Okay, um, construction actually began in 1803 by Thomas Waddles, but it was called Waddles Tavern. This was not the original building. They moved it right, right next door, down on the side street here. Okay. I don't know how they could have moved it back then, but they did. <laughs> 1913, the building uh, begins again building by uh, Erford Page, who's the president and founder of the Page C Company. And New York City resident Mary Blodgett, the wealthy wife of a central New York railroad tycoon, who do donated $25,000 for the rebuilding of the hotel. That was a lot of money then. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. And she wanted it, the speculation was she had to name it after her mother, who was Mrs. Sherwood. Oh, okay. That's how they got the name. Interesting. Yeah. Makes sense. 1930, this is the most well-known story about the Sherwood, that a girl by the name of Rebecca jumped off the balcony. She stayed in room 206, she had an argument with her boyfriend, and for whatever reason, she jumped off the balcony and committed suicide. Now... Do you know for a fact that she jumped, or was she, did she have help? No, no, she jumped. Okay. Now, the story behind this is I'll show you this picture. Why? I think it's an urban legend. But you look online, and they say that's the... If you look at the Sherwood Inn online, they're going to say to tell you about Rebecca. This is the picture that was taken back then. Okay, up on the balcony, they were shooting from across the street, and of course they had the hood over. You know, yeah, yeah. Back in the old days. Right. And at the exact moment, somebody popped out. You see up here in this middle door, there's a figure up there. Right here. Right after that picture was that. shot. I don't know if you can see the little figment in the center there. Yeah. Right yes. after that picture was taken, that's when she jumped, supposedly jumped. Oh. And it was just a fraction of a minute too late. They didn't catch it on camera. Wow. And he never saw the girl up there. No. Right around the corner, and I'll show you where, there was a toy box. And John Lee had a little boy. And this little boy had a toy box there, so when you know, he was down here working, the boy would play with the toys. We're doing a ghost investigation. All of a sudden, the we heard a noise inside the toy box. We opened the toy box, these toys were moving. Oh my goodness. Yeah, honest God, they were moving. Wow. I mean, I've personally seen it, and so did my whole crew that was there. And I got out my meters, my meters were going crazy. So I did some more research and found out there was a little boy that perished here in the, when the hotel was first built. And he used to play right in this area. The first thing we're going to do is when we do ghost hunts, we're going to look for signs. Uh, the first is going to be unusual noises. Another thing is uh, odors that you can't explain. Like, the most common odor of walking into a place, tobacco. you got to know it's not going to be native to that area. Uh, the other thing is, which is very common, is the feelings of being touched. That happens a lot. You'll feel something brushing your hair. I don't have that problem. <laughs> Some of you may. Something may brush across you. You may feel something on your arms. Batteries losing their charge. A lot of time camera batteries will go dead. And what these are, these, our bodies um, give off 60 um, milliseconds of energy. And, and when we do ghost investigations, we use EMF meters. And when we get so much milliseconds of energy, ghosts will give off like between 10 and 20 milliseconds of energy. And you can't explain that. These meters will go off. So it'll go off like that if there's a spirit there. Oh, what a wicked web we weave as we gather here this Friday Eve. Is what you see real or make believe? Only you can decide what is real and what's an illusion. Could it be Rebecca who jumped off the roof? 
walk in the halls of the Sherwood looking oh so aloof. Or the little boy that plays in the cellar. Some say he's one of the original dwellers. Is there something evil in room 206? Yeah. Or electric and plumbing problems can't seem to be fixed? Or the elevator doors that open and close, no one gets off or on, so no one really knows. Could it be poor, poor Lucinda who hung from the rafts, waiting for the return of her soldier lover from a war that had passed? Or was it the chambermaid who died in the fire? Some say it's true, others say I'm a liar. <laughs> or could it be the young lady all dressed in white? Many guests claim to have seen her and caused quite the fright. Many guests have checked in, some never checked out. Others elect to remain here permanently, and I believe this without a doubt.